I just started on the YouTube journey and it's been, mm-hmm. it's been beautiful and it's humbling. And what I've, yeah. what I've realized is, you know, the people that ultimately are successful are the people that are committed regardless of who's listening, right? Like yep. so many people chase the metrics, but the, the creators that are successful, I was listening to, I think it was, uh, I can't remember exactly who it was, but they, they had started and they put out for years, like content, it was either on a daily or a weekly basis, but like, and no one was listening, but it was their commitment to the process. They, it wasn't about, yeah. okay, everyone's listening. That then now, of course, they've got millions of followers, et cetera. But 98, 99% of people would quit in the first six months because they'd be like, oh, I'm, why am I even doing this? I, like, yeah, because right. they're, they're creating it for the perceived value they think of yeah. around other people. And, you know, the number one, number one regret of the dying is that they didn't take a shot at living the life of their dreams, living yeah. life on their own terms. They were too fearful of the judgment of others. And I would say the one thing for anyone listening is like, guys, gals, as you know, like we all have dreams and we all fear other people's judgments and we all want someone else's validation and to, you know, lots of people to say, you know, this is great. This is significant. You know, that's a human value. Uh, That said, the, the counterintuitive paradox is it's actually our commitment to the work itself, regardless of who's listening, and the truest form of our own listening and the truest form of our own self-expression that is the key to our liberation. And I feel yeah. like that's the stuff that people resonate with, right? The more yeah. authentic your song, the more that people want to listen. And, mm. and, the, and, and, that, and, that, and that is, that's the truth of it, right? Like very... Mm. Most people spend their whole life thinking, how can I make a hit song that everyone's going to want to dance to? But the, the, the problem is, by the way, like even those who have a hit song, like you're talking about the late 90s, right? Like I'm actually friends with someone, not, not as a name dropper, but that who was in No Doubt, right? Mm-hmm. But like, you know, yeah, in the 90s, they were playing in, in front of, you know, 100,000 people. But mm-hmm. in, the tw- in the 2000s, they don't even, they're not existing anymore, right? So like right. if he was, if he was, if he was trying to live his life as it, my success is only when I'm playing in front of a hundred thousand people, then even that hit song is now the anchor for a deep amount of duress and stress. Right. Sure. Whereas, right. whereas if you are like, you know what, that was my song then now I have a new song now and it looks totally different and it's not yep. based on how many people are in the stadium. It's based yep. on how authentic it is to your, to your note. That to me, that's, that's mm. the trick, right? It's like, how do we keep singing? regardless of who comes in and out of the room or, and, and not, and it's not about like trying to make a song that we think they'll like, it's about what is true for you, you know? And oftentimes, you know, Johnny Cash is a great example, or um, I don't know if anyone saw the movie uh, crazy was a crazy heart with Jeff Bridges, you know, where, mm-hmm. where his, you know, a lot of times the greatest songs are about, you know, the stuff that we that are most vulnerable, like that we don't think is sexy and, and we think no one wants to hear. But like people identify with that. They're like, oh, yeah. man, you know, like that that resonates, you know, because like that's the stuff no one wants to talk about. But guess what? Yeah, it's the human experience. 